Hashtag relationship goals has been a trending topic worldwide for years now. Search for this hashtag on social media, and you'll find celebrity couples posing at exclusive clubs, stills from romantic movies at the point where the boy gets the girl, cute couples kissing on a beach or cuddled up in bed, a boyfriend-girlfriend pair holding balloons in the park, and giving the impression that their relationship has never been anything but pure happiness. And when people repost these pictures with the hashtag, what are they saying? They're saying, I want a relationship like that. Kim and Kanye, J and B, Prince William and Kate, Will and Jada, some unidentified couple who look really good in a picture that happened to go viral. We can easily become obsessed with their seemingly perfect images and make them our idols and ideals. Okay, maybe you've never noticed the hashtag relationship goals tag online, much less posted anything with it. But if I were to ask you to think about the relationship you want, would an idealized picture flash into your mind? Maybe it's you with a tall, handsome pro athlete who takes you on shopping sprees. Or maybe it's you beside a girl who's hood like Cardi B, but has a sweet side like Carrie Underwood. Is he an amazing listener with a classic swag like George Clooney and a job that pays both his bills and yours? Now, if you just asked, what's wrong with that in your head? Allow me to submit to you that maybe there's more to relationship than what pop culture has taught us or our own imaginings have dreamed up. Maybe our society sells an illusion of intimate relationship that's more like a mirage. The closer you get to it, the more you realize it's not real at all. Maybe the things we tend to celebrate are built on unstable foundations and are bound to eventually fall. But also, maybe there are some truths here that can be unlocked about how and why human connection is so important and how we can achieve it. I believe so, and that's why I've written Relationship Goals, about real relationship goals. Why Our Generation is So Clueless First, there's baby Mikey in his crib, born 1986 in Tulsa, Oklahoma. He was cute. Next is me and my whole family when I was little. Mom and dad with their four really active boys, minus my baby brother, Grayson, who came unexpectedly late. How could they do it with all of us and still be married today, after 40 years? I don't even know. Then at age five, I was playing drums at church, the place where I spent most of my childhood. So I knew what was right from an early age. I only wish I'd done what was right more often. When I was 17, I went on tour with the late, great Wayman Tisdale, thinking I'm going to be the next Tony Royster Jr. Look him up. He's awesome. Next, picture me with the most beautiful girl in the world the night we met. But I'll get to her in a little bit. I attended Edison High School where I became the first African-American Mr. Edison, an achievement that came as a surprise to many, but was the start of my being recognized as a leader. After high school, I had six months of high-quality education from Tulsa Community College. Then I started a business of my own. Then there is a very influential person in my life, Bishop Gary McIntosh my ministry mentor, and the man who gave me opportunities to preach. In 2015, he entrusted me with leadership of the church he'd founded, Greenwood Christian Center, now known as Transformation Church. Lastly, imagine me up on stage doing what I was created to do, representing God's Word.